Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And we're going to be talking about how to make cottage cheese with probiotics today. Right now, I am seeing cottage cheese ice cream everywhere. Everybody's doing videos and making recipes. And I mean, it's everywhere. And uh, I use, I've done this for years. I've made cottage cheese ice cream. Oh, gosh, it's been a long time. It's it's very high in protein. Um, but you got to have, I always made it with my own cottage cheese. You can also make it with store-bought cottage cheese. But I want to teach you how to make cottage cheese with yogurt like El Ruderai. You could use uh, Yogurt Plus. You can use um, kefir to make it. Uh, there's There's all different ways to make cottage cheese probiotic. And guys, it's very easy to do. It looks like it's not, but it's, it's very easy. I've been doing it, gosh, I mean, 15, 20 years. And I, I just want you to, it's such a pleasurable thing when you make it. And it's so good. And there's so much um, buzz around it right now. Using cottage cheese to make ice cream, I want to teach you how to do that too. So I'm going to teach you how to make cottage cheese with probiotics with yogurt or keeper. You can do either one. And I really love cottage cheese, but I... I didn't always love cottage cheese. Uh, when I was a kid, I hated it. I thought it was awful. I wouldn't touch it. But when I got older, I started making it myself. And I learned from a lady who was a farmer. And she showed me how to make it from kefir. And uh, it was so crazy good that um, I bought it from her for a while until I started making it myself. And um, I even put the recipe in my very first book because... I loved it so much, Culture Food for Life. I loved the cottage cheese. So now I've gotten a whole bunch of other recipes on how to make uh, cottage cheese. And you can use El Ruderai yogurt. You can use Yogurt Plus. You can use kefir. And it is so good. Um, one of the things, like whenever my husband is wanting to lose a few pounds, he tells me he's having cottage cheese for dinner. And he chops up apples and cinnamon and puts it on his cottage cheese. For, and he does this for dinner because it's very high in protein. It's very, very satisfying. And it's also very nutrient dense and it works really well for him. He'll do that for, you know, a little while and he always drops a few pounds and he loves that. So it's one of our kind of go-to foods when we don't want to make dinner, uh, you know, we, we want to lose a little bit and cottage cheese is what we go to. I love to put strawberries on mine. I love semi-green bananas because they have resistant starch in them that feed all the good gut bacteria. I love to put that on my cottage cheese. Um, I like I like the strawberries or berries and slivered almonds. And you can add a little bit of homemade milk or regular milk or coconut milk poured over the top just to give it a little bit more richness. And uh, you can even dust it with things like, I like allulose sweetener, which is a zero calorie sweetener. It's really good for you. I like that. I like uh, date sugar on it. I like date syrup on mine. It's really good. You can even make cottage cheese savory. And my the farmer lady that taught me to make it used to, to put green onions and garlic salt in it. And oh gosh, it was so good. I used to love to eat that um, just by itself. Now, cottage cheese is mostly protein and it's about 80% protein. It is slowly absorbed by the gut and it keeps you very, very full, which is why it really works for us to even have it as a meal. It's also low in carbohydrates and it has a ton of nutrients. Um, that said, it's just as effective as whey protein um, that people use to build muscle. Um, and it works just as well. And I think it even works better because it inhibits muscle breakdown due to the slower absorption um, of the cottage cheese. Um, they say ha that having higher intake of protein like cottage cheese will make you feel fuller and, and satiated because of all the nutrients in it. And also, as you get older, you need more protein because you're losing muscle mass. And so you want to keep your muscles strong by giving more protein, doing a little bit of weightlifting as you as you grow older, because you start to lose that. And cultured cottage cheese will help you absorb your nutrients even more so than regular cottage cheese because it's more bioavailable. And that is due to the microbes that are alive and active in this very powerful probiotic cottage cheese. You can do a lot of things with cottage cheese, and you will love it. You can make the ice cream they're talking about, and basically all you do is take a cup or two of cottage cheese, and you can do it, just depends on the recipe, but basically they just take a cup of cottage cheese, or a cup and a half, or two cups, mix it with frozen food, fruit, and then put your favorite sweetener in there, 
blend it all up. Um, I like a food processor. I think that does a good job or a high speed blender. Stick it in a, um, a pan and stick it in your freezer for like an hour to an hour and a half. And you've got the creamiest, most delicious ice cream ever. So, um, it's just nutrient packed with things like B12, riboflavin, calcium. Um, it's got a bunch of minerals. It's folates. It's got tw- uh, 24 grams of protein, I think, is in a cup of cottage cheese. And there's like uh, magnesium in it, which is really important. Calcium and magnesium go hand in hand together. So it's really good. And it's got like 18% of the magnesium you need in a day. And it's got manganese. And it's even got electrolytes like thiamine and phosphorus, potassium. It's got vitamin A. I didn't remember that it had vitamin A, but it does. It has a lot of vitamin A because it's fermented too. It increases all of this. It's got a little bit of zinc, copper. Anyway, it's very, very good for you. And um, these cottage cheese probiotic strains depend on which culture you use. So if you use it to make, if you use kefir to make cottage cheese, you're going to get 50 plus good strains of bacteria and yeast in your kefir. If you make use the alruteri yogurt to make the cottage cheese, you're going to get all the alruteri that you would get in the yogurt, um, and more so because you're making it into cottage cheese. Um, I have a yogurt plus which has bifidobacteria and a few other cultures um, that streptococcus, and they have uh, some of the main types of yog- uh, strains that are in yogurt. And if you want more bifido, yogurt plus is a good one to use to make this. I think that's probably. One of my favorites is the Yogurt Plus because of the taste. It tastes so good. I love that. Um, but you'll get Streptococcus and Planetarum and Dubuquerque spe- subspecies, Bulgaria species, all in Yogurt Plus. And it's, it just has a really good flavor. And uh, I like the other ones too. Uh, but you can pick the one you want to use. And you can, you're going to use about a cup and a half of the yogurt or the keeper or whichever one you want to use. And um, what you basically do is you put your milk in a pot and you put your cup and a half of sale ruteri or a cup and a half of kefir or whatever, or yogurt plus, you do that. You just put that in with the milk and then you stir it uh, till it gets to about 80 degrees on the stove. And once it hits 80 degrees, you turn the stove off because that way you're not killing the probiotics. You're just warming it up. And you're going to let it sit for like 24 hours. Sometimes it's done in 18 hours. Um, but what you'll notice is it'll have form a thick, thick curd on top. You take a knife and go through it and you'll see like a thick yogurt-like curd. Then you know it's good. And then you're going to strain out the whey. You're going to scoop it out and you could put it in cheesecloth and a strainer. Um, but put some cheesecloth inside of a strainer and strain out all the whey. And you can use that whey to make other things. You can use the leftover whey with more cottage cheese Or you can put it in a smoothie or you can, I've got so many things you could do with. You can do a face wash with it, stain removers. I have a lot of things you can do with whey. Um, And you can, you know, you don't want it to heat it too much because it's only getting to 80 degrees. So it's not going to lose its probiotics. Um, But you can, you know, use it to make a lot of different things. And so you can make a ruteri cottage cheese and you know, kefir cottage cheese or yogurt plus, and you will get tons and tons of probiotics like never before. And you're going to get a lot of whey too, because about half of it's going to be whey that you're going to strain out, but you're going to get those little curds and into the, um, when you start scooping it out. Okay. Let me explain to you. So, okay. So you're going to put that root right in a gallon of milk or put yogurt plus or a kefir, whichever one you want. Bring it to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, place a lid on it, then turn off that heat, and let it sit for 24 hours or until you see thick curd or a few billy curds that form when you stir it. And the very next day after it's been sitting, you're going to bring it to 100 Fahrenheit, very slowly over low heat, about a degree every minute. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And you're going to stir it every few minutes to break up the curd on the bottom of the pan so they won't burn. And you'll know it's done. You'll see the whey start to separate from the curd. And you'll see soft, fluffy curds floating. And I have step-by-step pictures on my recipe. And the whey is going to look like a clear yellowish liquid. And if you're not seeing any whey, you can take it up to 102, 103. Hold it there for a minute or two until you see a little whey. 
and a mixture of clouds of white billowy clouds. Then you're going to line a strainer with butter muslin. And uh, you can also like do this in a nut bag too, if you'd like. And place that strainer over a bowl or, you know, place it over something where you're going to collect the whey. Pour that mixture, scoop that mixture into the strainer a little at a time. I, I think I do it into like two batches because there's so much that you put in there. And then you just squeeze out the liquid. You kind of pick up the uh, corners of the cheesecloth, twist it, squeeze out the liquid until it's all removed. And you'll see the cottage cheese when you open the cheesecloth. Um, the whey will all drip into the bottom and you'll see all these little curds that are cottage cheese. And some people like to add a little salt. It helps preserve it longer, but you don't have to. I don't always do that. And then you can either store it in a, in a good container with a lid and you can pour a little cream or milk or something over top of it if you want it more creamy. Um, and then you can add fresh fruits and nuts, granola, cinnamon, apples, berries, bananas, anything that you like, you can add to it. The options are just absolutely endless. But you're going to store the cottage cheese in a refrigerated, in your refrigerator in a, in a storage dish that's, you know, secure. And it will last for, for you know, three, four weeks and up to a month in the fridge. I think it might last actually longer because the probiotics help preserve it. And um, I have some vacuum seal containers that I love from, I think it's Luvelli. They make it last three to five times longer. It makes my cottage cheese last a long time uh, because it sucks out the air. And I know I've had it in there a month and a half and it was fine. But anyway, if you can have any of those types of storage containers, they work really good. Um, but cottage cheese is, and then if you want to make it into ice cream, um, I'm going to put a recipe on here. Uh, I've made it so many times, I don't even think I've written up the recipe. But it's basically like one to two cups of cottage cheese and then one and a half to two cups of frozen fruit with a little bit of sweetener. Some people use maple syrup, some honey, some I like allulose in mine. You blend it all up in a high-speed blender or food. I like food processors. I think it works better. Then you put it in a, I usually put mine in a metal dish in the freezer. And then an hour and a half later, I have cottage cheese ice cream. That's delicious. And you can do all different types of variations on that, different types of fruit. I can't wait for peach season to get here because peach, I think, is one of my favorites. Frozen peaches and cottage cheese ice cream is one of my, I love that. So anyway, it's super easy. I'm going to put all the links and all of the recipes with step-by-step -step pictures in each of them so you can see exactly how to do this. Basically, all you're doing is putting it in a pot, heating it to 80 the first day, and then heating it to 100 on the next day after 24 hours, and then scooping it out and straining it. And that's how you make cottage cheese. So it is super easy. It's probiotic. It's so much better than the store-bought cottage cheeses. I do think there's some probiotic cottage cheeses out there. I think it's Good Culture has one, and they have a really good one that uh, a lot of people are using. That's a good one if you don't want to make your own. But if you have if you have Elruderi, and here's a good thing about Elruderi, sometimes you'll get separated Elruderi that separates into whey and curds and it's not very appetizing. You can use that to make this cottage cheese. If you've got separated Elruderi, it works great. Um, it'll make yummy cottage cheese. And then you, you have a way to use up the stuff that maybe you're not enjoying as much. Uh, and that's a great way to use it. It works really, really well. So these are just a few different uh, ways. It's kind of fun to teach people how to make this because everybody thinks it's kind of daunting, but it's not. Um, and make sure you check out all my recipes and see the pictures because that's going to help you a lot because then you'll kind of know what to look for. You'll know what it's going to look like at each step. So, and it doesn't take very long. And it's, I mean, it does take the 24 hours of culture, but so does everything else. When you're using fermented foods to make probiotic foods, you always ferment for a little bit of time. Anyway, I just hope you'll try it. Because with all the rage about cottage cheese ice cream, you got to try it and make your own and make it probiotic. Because then your ice cream is probiotic too. So, okay, so here's the deal. When you freeze freeze your, uh, cheese, your ice cream, or you freeze any culture that's been fermented, it makes the bacteria sluggish and they kind of go into a dormant state. But as soon as it warms up in your body and you eat it, then it comes alive again. So that's kind of how it works. You still get probiotics. They're just a little bit more sluggish until they get warm. And then as you ingest them in, into your body, those probiotics become active again. So that's pretty cool. So anyway, well, thanks for listening, guys. I hope you'll try it. And don't forget to check out all the recipes in the link description. And... Uh, Send me pictures if you make some. I, lo I love that when people do that. It's super fun, super easy, and it's a great way to get your gut bacteria to flourish and grow. Have a good week, guys, and we'll see you next time.